that we're looking at is very much based around the research which was conducted within the book Cracking the Sales Management Code uh, by Jason Jordan. The book looks in detail at, at the types of statistics and the data which is available to sales managers and then how to categorize and then use this information to help manage and reach, uh, reach the business goals and results. As, as you're all no doubt aware, managing, managing a sales team and, and sales management is, is a pretty intense job uh, with a number of factors which, which appear on the daily to-do list from reporting and, uh, to, uh, and analytics, forecasting, uh, fielding sales rep requests, tracking activity, helping with, with customer issues, uh, and a number of other, other factors. <clears throat> this process that we're going to look at today focuses on managing the sales team's activities in order to reach the sales objectives and in turn the business results. The research uh, that, that Jason and his team did when writing uh, the book Cracking the Sales Management Code uh, looked at a wide uh, array of uh, data or statistics which was available to, to sales managers. Um, over 306 different metrics were looked at. Uh, he then went on to categorize uh, these metrics according if according to if a sales manager could directly manage the statistic uh, some were clearly yes these could be managed some were no and, and some fell sort of into this maybe category from this research a framework emerged where critical differences existed um, as I say sales activities that can be proactively managed intermediate objectives that can be influenced but, uh, but not directly controlled and business outcomes that cannot be managed whatsoever. So <clears throat> these fell into what was dubbed sales activities, sales objectives and business results. So let's go ahead and take a look at these in a bit more detail. So a sales activity was defined as a salesperson and sales manager activity that can be proactively managed. One of those sales activities was called management. So essentially this was planning and conducting individual customer interactions. Ways of measuring this uh, included percentage reps doing call planning, call plan usage, and then average talk time. There were clearly a number of other factors which would fall into this call management category and that will be the same throughout the rest that we look at today. The next one was opportunity management. That was described as strategically navigating a multi-call sales site. Again, opportunity plans completed and percentage of qualified opportunities were a good way of measuring uh, opportunity management. The next sales activity that, that could be managed was account management. This was described as maximizing long-term value from a single customer. Some metrics that, that were used here to, to measure this type of data would be percentage of account plans in place, number of interactions per account. <clears throat> Territory management also fell into um, sales activities. This can be described as allocating efforts efficiently across different types of customers. Again, a couple of ways to measure this would be number of sales calls made per rep or percentage contacts with new customers. Salesforce training was also uh, within the sales activities which could be directly managed. Uh, this was described as investing in improved Salesforce execution. So uh, a common way of measuring this would be training hours per full-time employee or percentage of users logging on to uh, a CRM system. The next layer of, um, of data was, was known as sales objectives. These were described as objectives that can be influenced but only by managing their preceding activities that we've just looked at. So one of these, uh, one of these objectives was uh, market coverage, which could be described as maintaining sufficient selling capacity to pursue all desired opportunities. Uh, this could include uh, metrics such as uh, number of total selling hours, percentage of customers called, and percentage of customer facing time. 
The next objective uh, was Salesforce capability. Uh, and this is, uh, can be described as ensuring that sales pe uh, people are using their capacity effectively during individual customer interactions. So a good way of measuring this would be looking at a win-loss ratio, uh, percentage of deals advancing by stage within the sales pipeline, and length of the sales cycle. <clears throat> the next uh, sales objective uh, that, could, that we that uh, Jason looked at was product focus. This can be described as selling the products or services that your company wants to sell. So this may include revenue by product, cross-sell rate, and average deal size as a way of measuring this objective. The final one in the objective section is uh, customer focus, uh, which can be described as acquiring, retaining, and growing the customers that your company wants to have. So you could look at uh, number of new accounts, percentage of customer retention, or share of wallet here to examine you know, your, your customer focus and the data surrounding that. The final uh, one is business results. And, and really this, I guess, is where everything starts from a sales management point of view. <clears throat> this can be described as the outcomes of multiple objectives which cannot be managed whatsoever. So these, these, these results cannot be managed for themselves. It is the preceding activities and objectives which you can influence and manage to then affect the business results. So there was three of these, uh, and one of the ones which Jason looked at was satisfaction, which is essentially the internal or external perception of your business. So your customer satisfaction rating would be a great way of uh, examining this. Employee satisfaction through a survey is also another good way. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the next one was market share. This could be described as uh, the portion of your company by customer or employee. So percentage market share is probably the most common way of looking at, looking at this or, or market penetration. The final and, and really the most common business result that's looked at would be financial. So this essentially was a, a, a measure of revenue, uh, profitability or cost. So a really simple way would be the amount of revenue that the business have, has achieved or the percentage of revenue growth if you're looking at it a year on year or quarter on quarter time basis. What, um, Jason suggested is that you can build a path to success by identifying the activities that yield the objectives that lead to results and then continue to manage the activities uh, relentlessly. So, for example, if a business wanted to achieve a 3% increase in revenue, then it could achieve this by looking at market coverage. So to affect that, you may wish to do four new customer. You may wish to attract four new customers per quarter, which could equate to 16 prospecting calls per quarter to new new customers. <clears throat> and in the same manner, uh, if you looked at account management, um, you could affect the customer focus, uh, which is within, as I say, the sales objectives. So if you looked at as a, uh, an activity as account plan completion, which clearly affects the share of wallet, which will then lead up to customer focus, and then on to market share, which is a result of increased share of wallet, that will then bring you back to the business result that you were after. What, what Jason said it was very important to do is to select and quantify the best objectives that will lead to those results. But you first must identify the results which you want to achieve. So essentially what he's saying here is it's important to reverse engineer the path. Rather than looking at, at activities first, he suggested that you should look in detail at, uh, at the business result that you want. Then look at the objectives which will affect that and then the activities which can influence that objective. 
And it's it's really important to note here that I, I personally would re recommend reviewing this this uh, path on a regular basis to ensure that the activities that are being completed within the business are affecting the right objectives that are in line with the with the business results. So. Uh, in summary, you can very much simplify the sales management role by establishing the right path from reverse engineering from results to objectives to activities. This will allow you to focus on managing the activities that matter and hopefully get you a bit of time back as well. Uh, right, that's it for the presentation. Uh, has anyone got any questions? Hi Chris, thanks very much for that, um, a very interesting presentation. Um, we've had a few questions come in. Uh, why is it important to start your plan with business results um, than objectives, than activities? Well, ultimately the business result is, is the end goal. So uh, looking at the example I gave earlier, uh, if you are looking to increase your revenue, there's a number of ways that you can do that. So you could do that by increasing the number of new business or the amount of new business that you bring on. Uh, however, you could also do that by um, changing the product focus uh, or customer focus. So again, that would have a different set of activities beneath it to influence the end result. So that's why it's important to understand the business result that you want before you start defining the sales activities that you're going to proactively manage. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, and just the last one, um, do you think there is one type of sales activity which is the most important to manage? No, I don't think so. I think that it completely depends on the market that the business is operating within and ultimately the, the business result that you're going to get to. I think the one which does overarch them all is actually Salesforce training uh, because that has a positive effect really across everything, so across the sales objectives, across the other sales activities, and ultimately in the longer term the business results. Fantastic, thank you very much. We do have um some questions around CP. So we've just had one more come in. Um, how would you recommend a sales manager sets goals and targets for his team in terms of activities? Well, in the business I work within, uh, we are a heavy salesforce.com uh, using business, which is great for tracking such things as calls, meetings, so on and so forth, which is ideal for the... Um, for the call management side of things and uh, for territory management and account management and opportunity management. But in terms, if you looked at, say, potentially Salesforce training, then a questionnaire type basis or an observational um, way of, of collecting data would be a good way to go. Again, it, it does very much depend on the business result that you're trying to achieve and the activity that you're trying to manage. But what you want to ensure is that you can continue to manage this over a, over a set period or certainly over a longer time period so that you can see whether this activity is affecting the ob objectives and then leading to the business results. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, interesting question. Comes from, as an aspiring sales manager, how would you recommend to progress into the career from field sales? Well, I think I think that's a really good question. Um, I, uh, you know, and, and I'm going through this process myself at the moment. And I would very much, um, and I've used this this diagram, if you like, in this presentation. So, if somebody sets sets your target to increase your revenue uh, by five percent year on year, then you can use this model to find out the best way and the most effective way to do that. So if you are given the autonomy to set your own sales objectives and sales activities and ultimately influence the business results, I think that your success will speak for itself and, and help you to 
to progress to the to the next level from essentially field sales to sales management. Okay, I hope that answered the question. Uh, um, one other question: How? Sorry, I've just lost my screen. How can you quantify the correct amount of prospecting per salesperson? That's a really good question, and and that is going to differentiate. And this is one of the things that, that Jason looked at in a lot of detail in the book, because of the differences. So you know, typically sales reps will manage a, a geographic area, uh, and one area may be highly penetrated with uh, a large amount of customers already working with the business, whereas another area uh, will have a low number of customers within it, but a high number of prospects, and it's important really to tailor the approach that you have uh, and the activities that are being managed to that specific sales rep or that specific region. It's, in my experience, it's very rare that even if a, a sales rep does essentially the same job, the difference in the territory will mean difference in the required activities to reach the business results. And you may actually look that market it, that if you're looking for a financial business result again let, let's go back to revenue which is probably the most common if you're looking for a five percent increase year on year in revenue then one certain sales rep may need to generate that to a new business because he's got a low number of existing customers so uh, a territory management sales activity would be the right way to manage that whereas another sales rep may have a high number of customers and that would mean that an account management uh, list of activities being managed would be the, the way to reach that, that business result. So it, it really does depend on, on each sales rep and each different business as well. Okay, fantastic. Um, we, we've got quite a few questions coming in now. Actually. What would you suggest if the lines of general and sales management are blurred by your company? Um, so, so general management and sales management, yeah, okay, I think I understand the question. I think, again, it comes back to um, how, how much uh, you as a sales rep or as a sales manager are being defined. Normally, in my experience, you will be given the business results uh, to achieve. That will be your target. So, you know, achieve, I don't know, £500,000 worth of revenue, which is... 10% growth year on year and then in my experience it's left to either the sales rep or the sales manager to define a plan around uh, around reaching that business result and if you if you are given the autonomy of that that's great because you can really set your own activities that are going to influence the objectives that you feel are going to reach the business result but yeah, it, it can be it can be tricky if um, the lines of management are slightly blurred. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, that's all the questions we have at the moment. Um, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, very interesting webinar there. Um, I hope everyone walks away with something, having learned something, and take it back to their uh, team or organisation. Um, Please do keep a lookout for the upcoming uh, webinars, seminars. They're all published on the Iceman website. And, of course, we have BESMA in the next few weeks. Um, thank you all for attending, and I hope you have a very nice afternoon. Thank you very much.